Hi everybody, I have been working on building a reef manifold because I'm in the process of setting up some reactors. So I kind of created a little mock-up here of what I'm trying to do, got all the pieces fit together. But my goal is this, I want to run a GFO reactor and a carbon reactor on the right side of the sump, and then I want to run bio pellets off to the left side of the sump. And this all is going to fit beneath my 90 gallon aquarium inside the cabinet. So I've created this manifold system. These two outlets are going to supply the reactors on the right side with water. This outlet's going to supply my bio pellet reactor with water. I've got an extra outlet and then I've got the bypass here on the end. My sump is located directly beneath my 90 gallon aquarium inside the aquarium cabinet and that's where this manifold is going to go. It's actually going to hang from some brackets along the back side of the uh, cabinet, inside the cabinet underneath like this. And I'm going to direct the outlets towards the reactors. Uh, that's going to uh, make running the hoses a little bit neater and prevent any kinking along the way. Also, I'll be able to make shorter runs because it's only about 12 to 18 inches or so from these outlets to where the uh, reactors are actually going to be positioned. I decided to go with the more expensive gate valves. They just allow better fine tuning and I've had some difficulty in the past with ball valves like this getting locked up because of deposits from the salt water. I think calcium deposits and, and whatnot. Uh, they just tend to get really difficult to turn after they've been in the water and in use for a while. You could go ahead and give it a try. I mean, there is a big price difference. These are usually about one-third the cost of a quality gate valve, but I decided to go the more expensive and more reliable route with this. Plus, I like the idea of the, um, uh, the added adjustability that you get with a gate valve. The only downside of the gate valve, of course, is the cost, and if you do need to shut it off entirely, you've got to turn quite a bit until the gate is entirely closed. Whereas with the ball valve, it's just 90 degrees and you're closed. Let's take a closer look at all the pieces I used to construct this. Over here, this is where the, uh, the pump is going to be supplying the manifold, and I'm using an elbow here. It's got female threads on the inside so that a male threaded barbed fitting can fit right in there. And of course, I'll be using some Teflon tape to make that be a waterproof seal. Now the connectors between each of these T's here is just three quarter inch PVC. You could of course make this entire thing out of one inch PVC or really any size PVC, just using you know larger one inch valves and, and whatnot. For my application, I felt that three quarter inch was going to be just right. Plus it allowed me to make this a little bit smaller and more compact to fit in my cabinet. But yeah, you can see the run across the top is just a combination of three quarter inch PVC cut to the length that I needed, and then a T. And then we come across to the end here. Again, I'm just using an elbow here. This elbow is just a, a slip joint elbow going down to the valve. And then the coupling here has female threads on the inside to allow for a male threaded barbed fitting. Now all the valves here are just slip valves, meaning that you just slip the PVC into them and cement it in place. They're not threaded. The threaded ones, they do make threaded valves, but they're even more expensive than, than these. And I'm trying to keep the cost down somewhat on this build. Now, of course, the outlets here, you could run them straight down or at a 45 degree angle. I opted for a 90 degree angle just because the hose and um, the uh, reactors that I'm using, they're, they're about at the same height that this manifold is going to be when everything is said and done. So it's just going to allow me to run the hoses a bit neater. Now, obviously you'll need to make sure that the barb fittings that you're using on your manifold here 
are the same size as the fittings on the devices you're running so that you don't have to change the hose diameter mid-run. And um, for my application, I just needed half-inch hoses, two of them, to run the smaller reactors, and then I needed a, a three-quarter inch hose for the bio pellet reactor. And again, this is going to be an extra outlet that will just remain closed until the day that I need it. Probably won't need it. You know, three reactors is really a lot for, for most reef tanks, but you never know. To cut the pipe to size, I'm just using this pipe cutter. It works just fine for three quarter inch PVC, one inch PVC, and I'm not sure, but I think it goes up even to maybe one and a half inch PVC. And I got some Teflon tape here to seal up the threaded joints, and of course everything will be cemented together. You don't want to not cement it because you're going to have little leaks if you uh, try to just press fit it all together. Use a pencil to make your marks and a ruler to get everything measured out just the way you need it to be. Here's just a quick demonstration how to use the pipe cutter. Once you know what length you want to cut the pipe, just fit it in there and start ratcheting it down. There you go, it's that easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull everything apart and glue it back together.